Hello, this is Claude, and today we're going to repair the Mackey Pro FX8 version 2 mixer. Since I got it more than two years ago, I, it never got recognized by my computer through the USB port. Even when connected to the PC, it never showed up as a USB codex audio device in the sound settings of the control panel in Windows. So today is the day that we're going to fix that. As most of you know, I'm an avid gaming PC builder that naturally crossed over to electronic repairs. So since my channel is all about bringing diverse solutions that are not documented elsewhere, then we're going to tackle that Mackie repair today. This repair can be performed on most ProFX mixers since they all share the same USB interface as shown on the diagram. It mentions the models ProFX 8 to 12 and 16 to 22. Like I said, since I always had problems with the USB interface, I started like everyone else would do to browse most typical electronic resources on the internet and I soon realized that a lot of people had this problem and that there's not much help on how to repair it anywhere. First thing to do is to think safety. So disconnect the power cord first from the mixer and then remove the USB cable. Then proceed to open the mixer by removing the side covers and then removing all the screws of the steel backplate. Once you remove the steel backplate, just be careful because the power converter is attached to the backplate by a ribbon that is connected to the power mains and to the main PCB. Then you need to remove the USB PCB by removing the two screws in the back and these are of a different size than the back panel screws, so keep them separately. Now we need to remove the ribbon from the USB PCB and it is held by some hot glue, so remove the glue before detaching the ribbon. Once this is done, it's time to examine the board carefully for obvious damage. If none found, then inspect and test all the components, like resistors and capacitors, one by one, using the schematic, the schematic diagram as a reference. I always start with capacitors, especially the electrolytic ones, as they usually are the culprits. After inspecting the components and removing the bank of large 1000 microfarad capacitors, I found that two of the large capacitors were bad, so I replaced all four of them. Put Captain Tate at the top of the caps to prevent shorts with the main board, once you put it back into the mixer. By removing the large caps, I immediately noticed a black spot on the PCB, which told me that something got fried at some point. So I traced backwards from there and found the following resistors damaged and I replaced them with 0603 SMD resistors with my heat rework station. Resistor 22 at 10 ohms, resistor 19 at 1.5K ohms, resistor 17 at 1 million ohms. For those resistors, I didn't use any flux, just some heat and I plugged them out and back in with the same solder base. And since I was there, I replaced the main USB codec chip PCM2903B by the revised version PCM2903C from Texas Instrument. The B version mentions that it is not for new designs and since the C variant is current and has the same pinout and values, I just went for the new version. I got this chip from mouser.com. I removed the PCM2903 with some flux and using my heat rework station, I pulled it out using some tweezers. I cleaned up the pads with some flux and wicked the, sol the solder and cleaned with isopropyl alcohol before applying more solder to the pads carefully. Then I just put the new one back in and uh, just by heating the pads. I touched up each pin making sure not to have any solder blob shorting out pins together. I also changed the adjacent IC gate 74LVC08 that I got from DigiKey using the same technique as the PCM2903. I also replaced my USB 2 connector because since there was a spike or a short at some point, I just didn't want to take chances. Because my mixer has always been behind a quality search protector, I suspect that there might have been a short in the connector at some point, so which I highly suspect is the root cause of the problem. At the end, I just cleaned the board with isopropyl alcohol and put it all back together. To my joy and amazing relief, the computer saw my mixer for the first time in more than two years and I was able to enjoy my good old 80s music that you can barely hear through my headphones.
but I just don't want to get into problems with YouTube and their copyright police, so trust me, it's all good. Overall, I spent in direct components about $30, and I revived an approximate $250 mixer, not to mention the satisfaction of doing so. Not a bad deal at all, considering the learning value. In case your USB codex PCB board would be dead beyond repairs, I will link the part numbers written on the PCB board in the description below. I don't take any responsibility, obviously, if you kill your PCB either. I hope that this video was interesting, that it helped any other people with the same issue, and to show that you don't need to be an expert or an engineer to get going with electronics. I'm a business person myself, so if I can do it, many people can. Let me know in the comments below what you think of my repair, and if there are any pros that uh, are watching this video and want to chime in on what I could do better, let me know. And also let me know if you'd like to see my beginner's kit that allows me to perform these repairs. If you do so in the comments, I will oblige. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and mostly stay curious, keep learning, and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.